this video will go over the gameplay for the advanced Atoma rules in Hegemony. No, this is not Sonic the Hedgehog. These rings help organize and prioritize the different policies and the different actions for the Atoma player in advanced mode in Hegemony. The rings are different levels of priority. The higher you go, the higher the priority, and the lower you go, the lower the priority. If you move a, an action from one level to uh, another level that already has an action, so let's say we're gonna move this one up here, uh, the one that is closer the, to the ring is the one that has higher priority. So um, the one that was already there is gonna have that priority. But say this action was here, but it moved up here, and then it bypassed it to the next level, then the higher level is the higher priority. If on the other hand, you've got gaps, so say this gap here, what you're gonna end up doing, you are going to pull everything down to the lowest level that doesn't have a gap in place. So if there is a gap, you're trying to get rid of all the gaps and you always pull them this way. Now you're gonna account for two things. First of all, you've got the actions on this side and you are also going to have the different policies on the other side. They're gonna function similarly where you're gonna be able to move them up and down and prioritize the actions based on their location on the board. But uh, it's always the ones that are closer to this center ring is going to be the priority. So if we have a setup like this, it's not left or right, it's closer to the middle. So build company and taxation are gonna be the higher priority uh, actions for you to take. So now that we've familiarized ourselves with these cards, the rings and the action cards and the um, policy cards, let's consider how an a turn for the Atoma will play out in advanced mode. So ultimately they are again doing the actions and policies in the middle. And uh, in addition to that, they're looking to the highest priority. So the, the actions that are at the top or closest to the top and again closest to the middle are gonna be the actions that the Atoma takes in a turn. Now I have not set these cards up uh, in a way that you would with uh, any of the particular uh, factions. Uh, I will set this up correctly when I do a video on the capitalist class and then the other classes will have videos that have their initial setups so we can walk through the turn in a specific team manner. But let's just go through the mechanics of how this will work. So the first thing that will happen is you'll take a card from the deck and flip it over. If you have familiarized yourself with the simple mode, you know that you would take the first priority action in simple mode. This is not how that works. Instead, all of these symbols mean something different in this mode. So instead of just taking the one action, you have to do the checks that go along with them. And for the advanced mode, we have check cards that go with them. So you do them in order from left to right. So the first one is the propose bill symbol. So then in advanced mode, we are going to um, you have to be able to have a bill marker available and at least one policy priority card in a priority row um, to be able to do this, this move, but then you would check policies. So these are the desired policies that you would have. And for each of the two policies listed, in this case, taxation and labor market, right here, If the policy priority card is not set aside and you have at least one available bill marker, as it said on the other card, check where the policy marker is. If the current policy is next or directly next to your desired policy, you would then um, do, do the action proposed bill plus one. If your current policy is two spaces away from your desired policy, proposed bill will get plus two. If the policy is taxation, you have proposed bill plus one. 
and then you move the policy's priority card the same number of steps. And if you are unable to propose a bill for either policy, you would move your special action up one. So you would be able to uh, make use of each of these uh, and you can move it up. So let's say your current policy is two away from our desired policy. And in this case, so let's say taxation is at A when we want C. Well, now we're gonna do plus two. Also, taxation is a policy that we would be using. Then we will move the proposed bill up one, two, and then a third. Let's say in this case, the labor market is at C, so uh, we would be done with that check. On the check policies card, it also notes that when you move the proposed bill action, you also move the policies priority card the same number of steps. So let's say here, taxation is the one we're prioritizing and that's the one that can make the movement. So we moved proposed bill up three because of that. So taxation could move up one, two, three. Now notice right here, we don't uh, have a ring to represent another level. That doesn't mean the levels end. In most cases, the fact that the entirety of these actions and policies are gonna get pulled this way means we won't go past eight, but you can go higher if you run out of the, the levels and the steps, because uh, ultimately we're trying to figure out the highest priority item so we can, can keep going if necessary. The second action on this card is the sell to the foreign market action. So in that case, we would check the foreign market. We will check the current export card to see if you can sell to the foreign market. If you can make at least two transactions, then the sell to the foreign market will go up one per transaction. Otherwise, you would move special action up one. So let's say we could just do one. Quick correction here. You need at least two transactions available for sell to market. So the scenario I presented would not work. Uh, you couldn't do just one sell to the foreign market. You would have to at least do two. And in the scenario I presented, if there was just one uh, transaction available, then you would not be able to do the movement of the sell to foreign market card. The third action is to build companies. And when you look at the check companies card, you are able to see that for each company in the market that you can afford to build, you check the following. First of all, if it's an automated or if there are unemployed workers available that could fill all the slots, you get one uh, build company movement per two production phases remaining. So if you're on the first turn or the second turn, uh, there are four production phases remaining. Uh, that means you would get uh, to move this twice. Whereas if you move farther in the game, you only get to move it one. If it also produces a resource that you are not able to produce, you get to move it up one. And then you check the following. If there's a demonstration, you move build company up three. And if the previous questions cause the priority card to move one step or less, you also get a special action of one. For each non-operational company that you own, you check the following. If you sell it, you'll get at least 20. Then you can move sell company up one per 10 that you would gain from selling the company. Let's say that you are only able to uh, get the benefit of a resource that you're not able to produce. Uh, you don't get the extra benefit because you don't have any automated companies and there are no unemployed workers. There's also no demonstrations. Uh, so that would mean you get to move your build company up one priority. And then also the special action, uh, you have um, only one step that you moved up. So you could also move this special action up. Now this proposed bill would have moved in when the build company went up. So now the special action will move up there. Let's also say then you have a non-operational company that you will get 24 if you sell. So since it is one per 10, you would get to move sell company up one, two.
Finally, the last uh, part of the action card here is to check influence. So then you would look and see if there's at least one proposed bill and you would count all influence all the other players currently have at all the influence the others would get by the carry out election step assuming the board state remains the same if that number is higher than the amount of influence you currently have plus the influence you will produce in the upcoming production phase assuming the board remains as it is you would take everyone else's influence and the influence they're going to produce add it all together then take the Atoma's influence and the amount they're going to produce, add it together, and everyone else's minus the Atoma's influence and poten potential influence this round, that's going to be the amount that lobbying is going to move up. If there are no proposed bills, then the special action will move up one. And they're saying uh, that whenever you count the potential influence, include production from operational companies, trade union bonuses, and the state's personal influence gained due to legitimacy. So count all those things and factor them in when deciding whether influence will go up. So in this case, let's say that all the other uh, factions will have 10 influence, and when all is said and done, the uh, Atoma will have seven. In that case, 10 minus 7 is 3, and the lobby would go up 1, 2, 3. So you've done all your checks at that point, and that helps you determine what action you're going to take. So now that we've performed all the checks, the next step is to collapse the rows down. So anywhere you see a gap, you just pull the cards down by level. You keep them together in the same row, so this group of three all comes down together. But then we have it collapsed down. Now it is time for the Atoma to take their action, and we are going to look at the highest priority, so the highest up the line, and the one closest to the marker. So in this case, the action would be to do a build company action. If by chance, as you look and if you cannot perform this uh, first priority card, you would move to the second priority. Now, if it was another one on the same row, you would move outward from the middle. But in this case, there's no second priority card here. So you would move down proposed bill would be the next one. And in that case, the action requires a bill marker to be available and at least one priority uh, policy priority card in a priority row. So in this case, taxation is the highest one and this is where the bill will be proposed. If you propose a bill, then you would set aside that card for the remainder of the round. And unless there's an immediate vote called, if there's an immediate vote, if the vote does not pass, then the priority card would stay on the table. If the vote passes and the policy marker is now on the Atoma's desired policy, then we again set that priority uh, policy card aside. And if the vo vote passes and the policy marker is next to the Atoma's desired policy, you can move the priority card to the end of the bottom row. And if the vote passes and the policy marker is two sections away from the Atoma's desired policy, move the priority uh, card to the end to the second row from the bottom the different scenarios for proposing bills are all on page six of the crisis and control rule book. After the Atoma takes an action, they take the card that they uh, made the action from and they move it two, two priority levels down. So if this was the build company and that was the action that we took, one, two will move down and it will go to the farthest left uh, on that uh, row. If the special action card is the highest priority and that is the action that you take, you can look at the bottom of 
the original card that you drew and see what the special action is, and that is the action that you Finally, will take. Finally, if you are unable to perform the highest priority action and the second highest priority action, then you would not move farther down the priority list. Instead, you would apply political pressure and add three voting cubes to the bag. During the preparation phase, the Atoma will make some checks on the different policies that are on the right side of the board, and they will do the following. Any priority cards of policies that have their policy marker on the Atoma's desired policy remain set aside. So when you look at that list of desired policies, any one of those that are on the board, 1C, 2C, 3C, 4C, 5C, 6A, and 7C, those will be set aside at this point already uh, and if by chance you accidentally did not set them aside, you want them set aside. The priority cards of any policies that have their policy marker right next to the Toma's desired policy are uh, placed at the end, the right side of the bottom row. So any that are just one away from their policy are uh, on the bottom row. And then any um, policy cards that are two sections away from the desired policy are placed at the end of the second to the bottom row. So let's say, for example, that uh, we had already said that taxation. So let's say, for example, fiscal policy is on the correct spot. That uh, comes off the board because it is what the um, it's what the capitalists in this case desire already. Uh, let's say that seven, three, and five are all policies that um, are just one away from what they want, and six, four, and two are all policies that are two away. That is how you would reset the board for the next round for the policies. So that's the basic differences with the advanced play of the Atoma from the simple mode. If you want to go over the general rules for all Atomas, I invite you to check out the video that goes over simple mode rules, as well as the individual factions for simple mode rules. But in upcoming videos, we will go over the specific setups, as well as just going over the cards as they play out for each of the three factions. Thank you.